Welcome to the Morning Download Podcast, your go-to resource for personal finance, economics, and market insights. In just eight minutes a day, we provide valuable information to help you make better money decisions. Don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at https semicolon slash slash www.morningdownload.com slash subscribe. Let's dive right in. In today's episode, we'll cover the market downturn and NVIDIA's earnings, concerns over the size and power of tech companies, Walmart's positive earnings and expansion plans, tax-free incomes in certain states, and the importance of independent thinking in value investing. Have you heard of the Magnificent Seven? It's not a Wild West movie, but a group of tech giants, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, the parent company of Google, Meta, formerly Facebook, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. These companies are so huge that when you combine their worth, they surpass the value of the second largest stock exchange in the world. Impressive, right? But with great size and power comes concern. Analysts are worried if these companies have become too big. Deutsche Bank points out that Microsoft and Apple alone have market caps similar to all the listed companies in the UK, France, and Saudi Arabia combined. That's mind-boggling. Deutsche Bank doesn't mince words either. They warn that the U.S. stock market is becoming incredibly concentrated, rivaling even 2000 and 1929 when it comes to concentration of wealth. This concentration can spell trouble, as we've seen with Tesla. Despite being one of the top five companies for over a year, Tesla's stock has gone down by 22% this year. On the other hand, Nvidia is up by an impressive 43% year to date. While these companies have been consistently successful so far, some argue that a crash might be looming. However, there are experts who believe that investors might be too fixated on big tech and neglecting other promising opportunities. Let's switch gears to some global news. China has cut its key loan rate for the first time since June to boost property funding. In India, there's a buzz that Z Entertainment might merge with Sony in a $10 billion deal, leading to a 10% jump in Z Entertainment's stock price. Looking ahead, Goldman Sachs predicts that rate cuts from the Bank of England are likely, although they could be larger. And here's an interesting forecast from city analysts. They believe that gold will reach $3,000 by 2025 and oil will hit $100. So, let's talk about some recent news in the stock market. First up, Walmart. They really did well in the holiday quarter, surpassing expectations for both earnings and revenue. Their earnings per share came in at $1. 80, beating the expected $1, 65. And when it comes to revenue, Walmart brought in $173, billion, which was higher than the anticipated $170, $71 billion. That's impressive. The company saw a 6% increase in quarterly revenue, thanks to a strong holiday season and growth in their global e-commerce sales. And they're not stopping there. Walmart is making moves to expand their business including buying TV maker Vizio for a cool $2. $3 billion to boost their advertising division. They also have plans to open over 150 new stores in the near future. In addition to all that, Walmart is increasing its dividend by 9% this year, which marks the largest increase they've had in over a decade. They're definitely serious about growth. Moving on to Home Depot. While their sales fell, they still managed to beat earnings and revenue estimates. Their earnings per share came in at $2.82, higher than the expected $2.77. And when it comes to revenue, Home Depot brought in $34.79 billion, surpassing the anticipated $34.64 billion. However, their net income for the fiscal fourth quarter did decrease compared to the previous year, going from $3.36 billion to $2.80 billion. Net sales also experienced a decrease from $35.83 billion in the previous year. Looking ahead, Home Depot is predicting a weak 2024, so they have some challenges to overcome in the near future. And now, a quick update on other stock market news. Barclays reported a net loss of $111 million, $139.8 million for the fourth quarter. They're planning to restructure their operations, including cost cuts, asset sales, and a reorganization of their business divisions. Last but not least, Capital One is making a big move. They're acquiring Discover for a whopping $35 billion, which is the biggest deal of 2024 so far. 
Let's dive right back into our discussion about tax-free incomes in the U.S. In the previous parts of this series, we mentioned some interesting ways to earn money without paying taxes. Today we'll explore a few more. First up, let's talk about corporate income. Did you know that there are six states in the U.S. that don't levy any corporate income taxes? If you're a business owner or thinking of starting a company, these states might be worth considering. Texas, Nevada, Ohio, Washington, South Dakota, and Wyoming are the lucky six. Among them, Wyoming and South Dakota are particularly attractive due to their business-friendly tax laws. However, it's worth noting that the other states on the list do tax gross receipts. Moving on to disability insurance payments, it's important to understand the tax implications. Generally, disability benefits are taxable. However, there are exceptions. If you have supplemental disability insurance that you paid for, even if it's through your employer, those benefits are tax-free. The same goes for a private disability insurance plan that you purchased with after-tax dollars. Additionally, workers' compensation, including compensatory damages for physical injuries and sickness, are also tax-free. Just keep in mind that punitive damages are not included in this exemption. Remember, there may be other exceptions and intricacies when it comes to how specific insurance payments are taxed. It's always a smart idea to consult a tax specialist who can provide expert advice tailored to your individual situation. Today's quote of the day comes from Joel Greenblatt, a renowned value investor. Greenblatt highlights the importance of defending our ideas and facing challenges. He believes that when our thoughts are questioned by smart individuals who ask logical questions, any gaps in our thinking become apparent. For Greenblatt, being an independent thinker is a crucial aspect of being a successful value investor. It means that you see the value in certain investments that the market might not appreciate or recognize. However, it is equally important to understand why the market doesn't see the same value as you do. The back and forth that occurs during the investment process plays a significant role in deepening our understanding. It helps us uncover the reasons behind the market's perception and allows us to refine our analysis. This continuous dialogue and exchange of ideas allow us to see the bigger picture and make more informed investment decisions. According to Greenblatt, this process of defending and challenging ideas creates a virtuous cycle. It pushes us to think critically and ensures that our analysis is thorough and robust. Ultimately, it helps us become better investors by sharpening our thinking and enabling us to identify investment opportunities that others may overlook. In today's episode, we delved into a range of topics, including NVIDIA's earnings, concerns over the power of tech giants, Walmart's positive performance and acquisitions, tax-free income opportunities, and the importance of independent thinking in value investing. Thanks for tuning into The Morning Download, your go-to podcast for personal finance, economics, and market insights in just eight minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe for more helpful content and sign up for our free newsletter at morningdownload.com slash subscribe.